Hello! First video for Goblet of Fire. And of course, interestingly enough in this one, we don't start immediately with Harry. Our first chapter is actually called The Riddle House, and it focuses mainly on uh, a gentleman by the name of Frank. So, why do we have this switch up from our previous idea of starting with Harry at the Dursleys? One is simply at this point in time, Roland can't. because we're on the fourth book. Like, really, you wanted to start with Harry so that you could get back into it. But at this point in time, the fourth book, you know Harry, you know what we're looking at, you know we're going to eventually get to Harry, but now is the time to actually start expanding into the fuller plotline. And that includes some backstory and some interesting pieces that we're not going to be able to, to quite weave together yet. Now, the chapter ends, of course, with the line that Harry Potter wakes with a start. So, we get the feeling that he knows at least some of what's going on, but he doesn't know the full thing. Because we don't just start with Frank uh, and his meeting with Lord Voldemort and Peter. Um, we actually get the story from before that, 50 years before that, to be specific, uh, with the murder of the Riddles. So we don't actually get the full history yet, because we're still missing um, what actually happened between um, Riddle Sr. and, well, Tom Riddle Sr., sorry, because there's three of them actually, uh, and, and Gaunt, the female Gaunt. We, we don't have that story yet. We actually just have the murder of the three riddles. I guess you could call it a riddle. But it's like... I've been up for a while and it's still early, so I'm a little tired. <laughs> so we've actually got this uh, growing backstory to this world. It's not just about Harry. There are other things that are happening. There are other people being affected because this murder is unsolved. But to us, especially rereading the series, it's obvious. It's the Avada Kedavra curse. Um, leaves a person physically perfectly fine other than being dead but this look of terror on their face because they can see it coming and this is something that affects even muggles the other interesting thing about starting with this chapter is again we're reminded that other people are now becoming involved like Peter having resurfaced here in a really terrible situation at the end of the last book, maybe we were with Harry, maybe we were like, shit all that serious and, and loop and kill him. But he is now in a worse situation than that. Voldemort is not a kind person. And right now he's master over Peter. Peter is a servant in this situation. It's like Dobby all over again. And we felt pity for Dobby. So I think we should certainly be feeling pity for Wormtail here in the choice that he's had to make. How does this seem like the lesser of two evils? It's, it's really hard to understand. Voldemort messes around with people's heads and, and he can look into them. We know he's an active... oh god, I'm gonna massacre this word. Um, Legitimine. And he can see into people's heads, which is how we actually figure out that he's calling Peter Wormtail. I doubt that's something Peter would have actively told him. 
Voldemort here is using the name Peter's friends gave him to actually mock Peter and remind him that he betrayed these friends for this option. It's not a healthy relationship at all, and it's actually a very terrible one. Especially since uh, we actually already have Voldemort hinting at the fact that um, Peter's gonna have to cut off his hand for him. He says that he can be of use again, but that won't come until the very end, and, and Peter says, you're gonna kill me. And, and Voldemort reassures him that he won't, but again, I think maybe Peter is questioning whether or not that's the preferred option at this point in time. This is not a good situation, and I think Peter is definitely aware of it. And he's actually trying, at least in part, to help with his life debt to Harry. He starts pointing, of course, to other options. And the thing is, when Voldemort asks him to open the door with the muggle there, Peter looks terrified, and I don't think he wouldn't look terrified if he wasn't concerned at least a little bit for Frank. Other Death Eaters might think, oh great, this is the perfect time to get Lord Voldemort's attention off of me and on to this muggle. Peter opens the door and stands there. He actually stands between Frank and this powerful being who's taunted and used him. So I think we do get glimpses of the Gryffindor Peter used to be. But Tom keeps poking at him. He keeps tearing him down because he knows Peter was a Gryffindor too. He tells Peter that it will just take a little courage from you. Everything that Lord Voldemort says in this scene has double meanings towards Peter. They're not simple statements. They're actually awash with pain and humility. And this is what we start this book with. Roland was probably well aware that we didn't like Peter just as much as Harry didn't like him. And maybe as much as Sirius and Remus didn't. And she pulls the rug right out from under our feet. She's not going to let us get that far. Because even bad people have reasons for their actions. And it's a question of what those reasons are. And for Peter, just as much for Snape as Snape, it's not a good situation. And that just is troubling because then who who do we focus our ire on? Well, I think with this one, we should be focusing at least a little bit on Lord Voldemort. Uh, in the future, I think it's also going to be Umbridge. But we'll get to her when we get to her. Right now, it's Peter, and Peter's not okay. And that's not okay. And Lord Voldemort's a dick. One last thing before I go. Frank's courage in this is... worthy of certainly being mentioned, if not emulated. This is a man who, at the age of 70, is in a house that basically ruined his life. And he's overheard criminals have, who have murdered a person talking 
and planning to murder another person. There's a lot of words he doesn't straight up understand. And then he's asked to come in. And there's the snake, and he probably knows he's gonna die. But, I mean, he walks in there and... <laughs> oh god, he talks back to Lord Voldemort. Like, straight up says, like... I don't know what these words mean, but if I'm a man, and if you're a man, turn and face me. And then things get beyond his utter understanding. But that point of turn and face me is enough. Because Harry, as close as I could tell, saw that. And maybe that will help him give have courage in the future. If Frank can say turn and face me, then I certainly think Harry can. Okay, so we're starting on our next adventure, and don't forget that upload schedule is switched to Mondays and Thursdays, so twice a week. Um, and we're gonna get going through the Goblet of Fire. So let's do this. I'm gonna keep reading, and I hope you do too. See you Thursday.